So we want to make sure this is, I don't know why that defaulted back to, but we want that to have no stroke. And then we want this color of yellow here. And then we want to make sure that we're on the right layer on the keyframe should be in um, 36, have that highlighted, which we are on that. And then um, in the properties panel under the tool option selection, choose star from the style menu. Um, so if I open this up, I can find star. Yours might be a little different, um, but it should be under tool options basically. And you should be able to use a drop down menu and select star. Um, for a number of sides, make sure it's five. You can enter that in. Um, and then this should be 0.05 um, star point size. Um, make sure the empty keyframe and the frame 36, the empty layer frame 36 is selected and um, where you want to add the star. So I think we just push OK. And start stra start dragging on the stage where you want to add a star. Um, so, so you can see, you can make it bigger by dragging. You just have to hold it down and drag. Um, you can rotate it. So we'll just start adding. When we release it, it'll, you know, fill in. So I guess I'll just put, you know, three here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and it looks like they have one here. And we can get off the the poly star tool so you still are in that. <clears throat> Let's just click off that by actually getting on the selection tool again, the black selection tool, um, so that we're not going to add any more stars on accident. So we're going to move on from the stars and we're going to create layer effects. So we're going to move the, um, we're going to move the playhead to frame 12. So I believe it's somewhere over here. We know we're on 12 by looking here. Select frame 12 in both, um, let's see, photo two and or photo one and um, the background layer. So, sorry, I'm going to move this just a little bit. I think I'm just having a little bit of an issue. Oh, sorry, this has gotten kind of larger, and I'm going to move it up a little bit. Okay, so frame twelve on the background layer and push shift and photo one. And this is where we're going to insert some keyframe. So insert, insert keyframe. So insert timeline keyframe. There's also a button that you can click, but I don't think I have it. So I'm doing it this way. And then in the properties panel, we're supposed to add, click the add filter button, but I don't think I have that in mine. Um, let's see. I'm going to have to find it up here, I think. Um, sorry. Well, maybe Yeah, I don't see it in here. Well, anyway, you guys should be able to add click the add filter button in the properties panel and choose blur to add a blur filter to the two selected keyframes. 
Let me look around. I don't know. I'm not seeing it, so we might just skip this part. Um, I don't see any filters anyway, anywhere. Unless I'm just missing it. Well, anyway. There should be a add filter button in the properties panel with these two things selected. Then you would go in there and change the blur of the X and the blur of the Y to four. Or no, to eight pixels, sorry. Eight pixels. Um, So we're basically just blurring the different layers. You're probably going to have to look at the book for that. I'm sorry about this. Um, I don't think my updated version, my unupdated version of Animate has that option. It's okay if you skip that yourself. It's basically just blurring the images and then they become clear um, as they come in. There should be a color effect option too in here, and you can change the brightness on some of the layers, um, and you can make them dark. You can make the selected layers slightly darker, which adds drama to the bright yellow stars. Um, but we're just gonna have to skip that because I don't have any of that in my properties panel. So moving on from that, um, one thing to keep in mind is you can do window history and this can actually help you step back in time if you need to, if you made some mistakes somewhere along the way, you can go back. Um, so if I don't want to select these keyframes, um, I can go back, I can go back to where I was. Um, so just a little hint, it's kind of like in Photoshop, if you want to step back, instead of doing Command Z, you can actually go into the History panel by going Window, and then History, and stepping back. So let's preview our movie. Um, it's a good idea to preview your movie frequently to ensure that you're achieving the desired effect. To quickly see your animation, choose Control Play. Control, play. So there it is. Let's do that again. Control, play. Well, that doesn't look too bad. You can also do control test. Um, and I think that, let's see, we'll open up a separate window. And you can view it that way. So I don't know why that happened, but anyway, you can do it that way. So when we first started this lesson, you know, our stage, we set that up at 800 pixels by 600 pix pixels. But maybe if we're making this for a client, and uh, maybe the client decides they need it to be in several different sizes or they'd like to create a smaller version uh, with a different aspect ratio for like a banner ad, um, different sized ad on a different, in a different location, so it needs to be different. Or they may want to create a version that will run um, on an Android device, which requires a specific dimension. So fortunately, you can modify the stage even after your content is put in place. When you change the stage dimensions, Animate provides the option of scaling 
the content with the stage, automatically shrinking or enlarging all your content proportionally. So let's do a file save. Um, file save. So we've saved this version at 800 by 600. Uh, in the document settings section of the properties panel, click on the stage here. Here it is. Um, you can click on, should be more settings. And that'll open up a new, you know, document settings dialog box here will pop up. And then what the height box is, we'll enter our new pixel dimensions. So we'll put 400 for the width, which is half the size that we did originally. And then we'll do 300, which is half the height we did originally. So you can select the scale content option um, right here. And leave the anchor option as is. Um, so it should look something like this anyway for you guys. I think it's pretty close to what you should have. The anchor option lets you choose the origin from which your content is resized. Um, okay, so we'll just push OK. Hopefully this works out. Okay, that looks pretty good. So um, Animate will modify the dimensions of the stage automatically and resize all the content. So that's pretty nice. Um, so do a file save as on this one. So we'll have two different sizes. File save as. Um, where did I save this? I think I saved it in documents. Illustration one. Or ele electronic design one, sorry. Here it is. Lesson one. Okay, and then we already have working copy FLA but we'll make it working copy underscore resized FLA. Make sure we have dot FLA selected and then save. So we'll have them, you know, two animate files. They're identical in content but with different stage dimensions. So we can close this file and then do a file open and we will actually do reopen this one, which was the original at 800 by 600 pixels. See, 800 by 600 pixels. And we're going to continue working in this document, I think. So, um, saving your movie. Um, save early, save often is always a good idea, just in case something crashes. Um, another good thing to do is to go to animate preferences or edit preferences for windows and then you can change you know make sure this is selected and then you can change the time you know every three minutes save my auto save my file so if there is a crash you know you you don't lose that much work and push ok be it i mean um hopefully we can just go into brightspace um you guys all know how to do that go in there put in those two files um right here, um, the two sizes, I will update this so that you know I want both files, but both files created, um, the smaller one and the larger one that we created in Animate. Upload those um, by April 7th. I might change this to April 8th since I didn't get all these videos done until Wednesday. But anyways, um, hopefully this isn't too hard. Hopefully you like this. Let me know if there's problems. I might have to create an alternative assignment for those that are having trouble running this program. Okay, well, um, yep, just let me know how everything goes. Uh, hopefully it's kind of fun for you guys to work with this, with this um, Adobe Animate.